All right, welcome everyone to the SportsCTV.net podcast. We are live here on Ustream. I'm Anthony Serenado along with Brian Gillette. Hey, how's it going up there? And not only are you getting a chance to hear, but now you are seeing us as we are live here from the Anaheim Convention Center for this uh, championship basketball. The game that we're going to be covering tonight is Modern Day versus... The Long Beach Poly Jackrabbits. That's right, and Brian, you were here to watch that game at the Anaheim Convention Center. Had a chance to put the highlights up on the website. So if you get a chance, go to our website, SportsCTV. Dot net and click on the video highlights link. Also, our podcast, audio podcast only. And then, of course, our Scholar Athlete of the Week, Sheldon Blackwell of the Etiwanda Eagles. You had an opportunity to talk to him yes. during their game as well, and it was very informative and fun to see the young man's answers. Well, that was after the Santa Monica game, which ended their season at home uh, before Tuesday night, bringing them here to the Anaheim Convention Center. If you mentioned that's where we're at. We're broadcasting live from the media stage at the Anaheim Convention Center. And uh, we're able to do so prior to the game. So we'll get as much contact. We have a few scheduled guests coming in, some of our old friends. Gordon Hamlow is supposed to show up. We have Director of Communications for CIF, Tom Sims. Simmons, is supposed to stop by. And who else? Whoever and, else comes yeah, in. Whoever else <laughs> Big Bird can stop by. We'll uh, say hi. I actually spoke with Coach McKnight just a few minutes ago. We had prearranged a uh, interview, but thought it was not in the best interest of CIF in keeping the wheels rolling, which I will ask. Uh, uh, I don't, not Commissioner, but Mr. Simmons, about that to show us just how in technical the operation is, just how much it takes manpower-wise to make this. To make this, it's not just a basketball tournament. This is its own little production, and quite the production. Well, let's to go ahead and we get a chance. Let's talk about the ball game that we'll be seeing later on, and we'll be tweeting live, taking pictures as well, and we'll be doing that throughout the day. Here, don't forget to go to our Twitter page at Sports Scene TV. And again, if the website's loading up a little slow for you, it's probably because of all the uh, traffic that's being hit, uh, swamping the server. So, hey, you know, by the way, if you're out there and you're hearing us, tweet us. I've got it set up. I've, I'm following uh, you. I'll probably be tweeting during a broadcast. Uh, if you have something you want us to talk about live, uh, we're there. So uh, let's use this social network and get it up to you and, and you hit it back to us. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the modern day Long Beach Poly game. We had a chance to see the highlights from the uh, game against Etiwanda, and then we had some footage that we had an opportunity to see, uh, modern day versus Loyola. And I mean, the one thing that we were looking at as a big deal would be the style of play from each team. We saw Long Beach Poly more of a slower paced ball game, maybe because they were playing against Etiwanda, they slowed the tempo down, but usually a coach says we go in a game and play our own ball game, our right, tempo. Right. But both the teams were... But were, you mentioned modern day in the next game after that was very fast paced, and it'll be interesting to see with the big men on both sides, both with agility, to see how that works out. Well, you know, that, that uh, to recap, in the first game we saw on Tuesday night, uh, Long Beach Poly playing at Awanda. Long Beach Poly came in with a definite height advantage. Both teams' makeup were, were somewhat the same as that they were scrappy, they were uh, ball handlers, uh, defensive minded, they had seen each other many times, and, uh, and I would say that it was probably a more mature uh, class wise. Long Beach team as opposed to a young Etiwanda team, although you know we had three seniors on the floor for Etiwanda. But uh, when watching the second game that night, which was Loyola in modern day, it was pretty evident that the pace of that game started off faster. It was it was a um, it was a faster paced game, and it was you know, with size on both both ends of that team. Loyola had a kid who was standing on the floor. Who was uh, six foot eleven and surprised everybody as his ability and his ball handling. That was, uh, oh, I don't have that stat in front of me or that book. Well, but. speaking of tall, the one guy that caught my eye when we were looking at the video highlights was Jordan Bell of the uh, Jack Rabbits. He's a junior, six eight, two hundred pounds. He saw a couple Jordan of shots. Cut, saw a couple of shots where he was just swatting them away. And I mean, this young man is. I mean, for a junior, you know, six eight, two hundred pounds. We had an opportunity to see him go toe to toe with the. Uh, the, the, the small Black guy for, yeah, Blackwell. Blackwell I mean, Blackwell Blackwell climbed that mountain and got the basket, but uh, it was a hard fall coming back down. down. Very fast. You know, one of the things that uh, noticed that Jordan, I think you'll see in tonight's game, that uh, Jordan Bell also, I say, plays a supporting role to Rashid Prince, uh, number one, who was their leading scorer last week in that game with 22 points. Jordan Bell did have nine points, but his defensive 
prowess under the basket, uh, more so not as getting the ball, but you have to shoot over him. If you're going to challenge right. him in the paint, you're going up. You have to go. You're going to have to get there going through Jordan Bell. And uh, Prince isn't that much smaller. Um, and you have, if we take a look here for uh, flipping over to Long Beach, Prince comes in also at six foot six, six foot six, six eight, both two fifteen, two hundred. They're both sizable kids. But Jordan has a couple inches, and uh, and that seems to be his. Prince is the ball handler, uh, from what I saw. Uh, but he's not the only one. They have a young, small kid on the team, uh, number three, Joshua Munson. Ball handler, he came up with 10 points. As as we were sitting there as a team, uh, I was with uh, Kurt and Robert. Kurt Mayo, Robert Bonillas was helping us out that night. Said, you know, this kid, it seemed like he almost, he, they kept saying, wow, he almost had a great shot. He almost had a great, but go back and look at it. The kid put in 10 points. He was four from 10 from the field. He had one three-pointer, one for four. But he was, uh, he was just a pest. He is, he is, Somebody that doesn't allow you to ignore him. If you ignore him, I think he's going to burn you. So many keys in the ball game with these two teams. I mean, looking back at modern day, you have Xavier Johnson, 23 points in the ball game against Loyola, 6'7", 210 pounds. I mean, and there's just not one guy. Him. Yeah, and I mean, and I'll tell you another person that is on the floor that uh, only scored 10 points last game. That's number five, Caton Renart. Uh, I don't know if I pronounced that properly or not. Uh, not real big, super ball handler, great posture on the floor, great confidence. Uh, to me, he was the dominant one, but Xavier, Xavier was the exciting one. So, talk there about again, you can't just isolate one guy. And talk about, about exciting. How about Stanley, Stanley Johnson, Johnson, the sophomore, sure. 6'7", 205 and not only that, how 16 about two, points. Two for three on the three-pointers. Only a sophomore. Yeah, there you go. He was 7 for 13 from the field. So, there's another guy that you just can't – you can't uh, – can't ignore. So modern day has consistent size. I see Long Beach having two big men up front. Modern day's pace was much faster. We have a long show to go, and I don't want to spend it all right here and just. And just shoot. <laughs> well, I, I see modern day. Uh, I see modern day with a tip of the hat in this one. Uh, but I would not be surprised. However, it comes out. I know that we're going to see a great game. We're going to see great physical talent. We're going to see good height in Polly. Uh, modern day is not deficient in height. They just spread it out evenly. So, Well, let's take a look at some of the numbers here from their prior game. We show here Long Beach Poly against Etiwanda uh, in the semifinal game. First half, they were shooting 36%. In the second half, they shot 42%. And that's when they really broke the game wide open. And when we say wide open, it was only a nine-point game difference. Well, it was a you close know what? one. It, it actually was even closer than going to the end. We, we called the nail in the coffin towards the end with about a minute and, and about just coming down to two minutes it was very early to do that but it was very evident uh, the key in that game for me was was isolating and handling uh, J Mac for Etiwanda when J Mac didn't have the opportunity to produce as he does and it seemed to the team was playing on their heels all night they had to you know normally Etiwanda gets the momentum going they're rolling we watch them all year they're ball handlers you notice it as we sat down and watched the films together yeah different their, game their different play game is move the ball move the ball move the ball move the ball shoot and they, it wasn't happening they were waiting for that ball opportunity and uh, that changed their game plan even though it was slight it, that little nuance that that was a different team uh, that they would normally bring to the table and as I was saying, and I didn't say before the game, I hope they didn't peak against Santa Monica because personally, Santa Monica was the best game I've seen them play all year. It was a different team on the floor. J Mac was back from an injury. They were fresh. They were huge. And uh, that team, that team last Friday, prior, prior, to, prior to that, was the team uh, could have walked through any one of these teams. For a modern day in their game against Loyola, they shot 45%. Uh, from uh, the floor, and then in the second half, they shot 55% overall, almost 50%, which, I mean, is really well, good for a team. What I think is uh, what brings that percentage up is that they were selective in their shots, and that game went down to the buzzer, and it was within the final seconds, it was determined a lot from the line with uh, them, with both That's teams. That's the key, yeah. Bonus. And uh, who took advantage of it? Who marked it? I, you know, we, I can throw back on the book and the well, pages. Well, but well, let's take a look at some of the important facts as well. Free throws in the first half uh, for free throws, modern day was 33%, two of six. In the second half, they shot 10 of 17 for almost 59%. On the flip side, you look at uh, 
Long Beach Poly against Etiwan in the first half, they were 100%, two for two. And then in the second half, they were 15 of 23, 65% with a 68% overall. So, I mean, if it comes down to those free throws in this ball game, everyone's <laughs> looking for a tight ball game. If it comes down to free throws, it'll be interesting. You know, it's funny. You say 100%, but they only have, they went to yeah. the line only once in that first half. Well, twice. Yeah, yeah, two for two. Well, two for two. Going to line one, 72 shots there uh, at 100%. But... I kind of came away with a feeling in that second half. Robert, you're out in the audience uh, behind the camera there, and didn't you feel that they kind of missed some opportunities from the line, and that was kind of evident. It did come back with Prince towards the end of the game, but if we go back, and if you'll allow me to flip a page here, hey, here comes one of our guests in the studio, or in, in his arena, actually. <laughs> so, But if you, you go back and take a look at that, Prince, um, that's some modern-day stats, Went to the line there towards the end of the fourth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve times. Prior in the third, he missed two. He had a two plus one and missed it. He then he went to there for two more and missed one of those. So he had several opportunities, but then get it got hot in the fourth when they kept putting him to the line. All right. So as you mentioned, uh, we have a guest, uh, Director of Communications, Tom Simmons. Come on in, Tom. Yeah, we'll share the seat over here with the mic with you. Sure. Anthony can bring that up. And. Uh, First of all, thanks for uh, taking time out to sit with us. Busy day, I'm sure. Yeah, very busy. <laughs> Basically, uh, you know, when we get a chance to, to talk to the person who is coordinating most of this, the first thing we'd like to find out is how many hours of sleep have you had? Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us, for, and everyone who's watching, what particularly goes on and behind the scenes what, to make it so smooth as you have it done tonight and also in the past. The, the staff here is what I want to say. <laughs> how many staff members have you brought into your fold for this operation? Uh, there's about a total of about 30 the, wow. that we brought into, besides the actual arena staff. The arena staff um, that the Anaheim Convention Center employs on a full-time basis. Uh, th that's, a, that's another number. I couldn't even tell you. I think uh, we're, we're somewhere around uh, two, 300 people when you think about the concessionaires and everybody else and the parking people. But I've got a, th a staff of about 35 here. And um, in terms of sleep, uh, I got home last night about midnight. Probably got to bed about 1.30, 2 o'clock and got up at 5. So... Uh, uh, it, it's been a, a quick turnaround. It's been a lot of hours. We've been working pretty much straight since uh, Tuesday. But like I always tell people when they say, well, you're really working hard. I, I, hey, I could be out digging a ditch someplace. So it's, yeah. uh, it's a pretty good life. It's great when you turn a hobby into a profession. It's amazing. I mean, I can't believe somebody pays me to do this. So. <laughs> well, I'll mention it to your bosses if you want. No, please. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let them know that you, I said you know, that. One of the things that I admire that... Uh, we've seen you, some of these people you're bringing in are the actual CIF coaches throughout the different leagues and divisions, and we noticed that you have it choreographed into people who greet the team coming in, they're given like their own personal attendant who sees them through the tournament, you have people that orchestrate the floor, you have people that are handling the food distribution in for you and stuff. Mm -hmm. What areas of involvement are you responsible for? Do you, uh, it, specifically or is it the whole all nine yards and media well it's it, it really officially it's just the media but that you know that never ever ends up being that way there's two of us Ryder Wolf is the administrator for basketball and he's the actual guy who runs everything and then we uh, employ a gentleman by the name of Ray Plutko who used to be a com the commissioner of the CIF Southern Section in the 80s and then, then went on to become the commissioner of the Colorado State Association we employ him as uh, our tournament director and uh, there's nobody better than Ray he's in the Southern California Interscholastic Basketball Coaches Hall of Fame he's actually the life the lifetime achievement award is named after him so there's nobody better to, to, to do that stuff than Ray but at the end of the day I'm the guy who kind of makes things happen, you know, on the event day and the guy who turn, runs around and, and does the stuff to make sure that people are sitting where they should be, the food is getting out where it should be, the players are where they should be, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of work, but I love it. It's a lot of fun. For the longest time, every time we look at our media guides, we see your name in there. Can you tell us how many years you have been here with CIF? Uh, it'll be 15 in November. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, I've, I've been very fortunate that to have the ability to work for this great organization for 15 years. And uh, they've, uh, they seem to be happy with my work, and so uh, they've allowed me to, to do so. And this is a full-time position, correct? It's a full-time position. Uh, it's uh, paid very well and very <laughs> good benefits, and uh, I'm very happy. And uh, I'm not 
and if anybody has an interest, I'm not going anywhere for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so for 15 years, you've seen quite some talent come through. Uh, to say the least, again, I think CIF has done a great job in hosting basketball championships. We were covering football. We were just so excited with the football, the way the outcome came, and just the way CIF conducts the championships and just the all-around season. Uh, for the 15 years that you've been here, I mean, does it just seem to be getting better and better every year for you? I mean, what are your thoughts? Well, I think it's definitely getting better and better in terms of the level of talent. Uh, I, I think that, you know, what you're seeing here, is probably the same level of collegiate talent that you had 10, 15 years ago. I think what you're seeing, at least in the Southern California ranks, and, and uh, I, I honestly believe that there's no better football, there's no better basketball, there's no better any sport. I think you could go from X, Y to Z, maybe lacrosse, but I don't think there's any better sports that are being played anywhere else in the country than there are right here in Southern California. And in our section, so. And I think the, the one thing that really is, is just the purity of the game. It's still a game, and you still have young student athletes, and we like to uh, put the emphasis on students because that's what they are. They're students first. They need to have the grades. They need to pull that GPA in order to play. And we've run into so many talented young men and players. Um, I mean, but I think that's what CIF is all about: keeping that purity and keeping the game fun. Well, you, you know, there's we don't have a job if there aren't student athletes. And I, 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 I try to tell people that all the time when they, you know, they may complain about some problem X through Z, and I'm not going to get into specifics, but you know, the, 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 the reason that I have a job is because of student athletes and because of the schools. I, I would not be in the position I am. There would be no CIF. There would be no championships. There'd be no us being here talking today without the student athletes. Well, um, two things I want to bring up, and staying on that line is, I, you may not know of our product and what we emphasize, but one of the things we do weekly, and the administrations of the schools have embraced it, and everyone seems to, is that we showcase, maybe not the stud on the floor, we showcase a scholar athlete each week. And we emphasize that CIF puts out their own standards for scholar athletes and their GPAs they have to maintain throughout that in order for them to reach that level. I know when my daughter did, it was an honored patch for her to include in her, in her jacket that she was a scholar athlete. And that's why we take the time to ask the coaches and the administration, provide us of an athlete who is doing it in the books as well as in the, on the floor. And those people time and time again are showing such, which we try to communicate to our, to our audience, such hope for the future because these kids have great posture, great communicators, great confidence. We ask them about their mentors. We ask them about you know, things that change in their life. And I, and I say that to you because I know CIF is very instrumental in emphasizing and acknowledging them at the end of each season, those people that have achieved scholar, uh, scholastic excellence. Is that, is that fair? Yeah, we have an academics awards program, not only at the section level, but at the state level. If you look at our motto, our motto is not athletics first, our, our motto is athletics third. It's actually uh, academics, integrity, athletics. And, you know, we, that's what we're trying to do. We, you know, and every single study that you'll ever read, it says, talks about how athletics builds character and makes good citizens and how those people that participate in high school athletics go on to be better people overall. Every statistic says that. And they don't do that just because of what they do on the field. Obviously, they need to be focused on not only making sure that you know they run the veer and they hit their hole the right way, but that they they know how to carry you know, a remainder in, in, in algebra or whatever. And, and I think it's important that 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 part of it is not underestimated, is not overlooked. Too many times we talk about the the great player on the basketball court who can dunk. But a lot of times, don't people don't know that that kid's got a 4.2 GPA as oh, well. That's so. unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. We we uh, at Ayala, we found three brothers that are all over 3.8 playing in there. They had five kids on that team alone on the floor. They were all scholar athletes. We go to Etowanda. We've gone through everyone on the floor there. Everybody in these, and I really admire the coaches that uh, that make sure that they have people in place to to make sure the academics. Um, are, are kept and monitored, as well as they, when they move on, these same athletes will not play NCAA if those grades aren't maintained. So it's, it's I think it's part, like, there's plenty of people that are high impact that, 
that can talk about the really shock value of the sport, but we want to bring that positive side, and that's what we're about. And, and uh, if you don't mind, I would like to transition into another question I'd have to, to ask you, your 15 years experience. You have been in a media, <laughs> a, 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 an entity that has grown so much that has allowed for specifics just like us to create an audience through the internet, a podcast which is not general TV, more specific. Where have you seen the media change? What has this done or taken away from your product? And how has that impacted? And what is the most significant change you've seen in that 15 years? Well, I, I think it's, the, the, it's, it's an interesting time. It's a very exciting time. Everybody talks about the death of newspapers. And you know, there, to a certain extent, there is that death of the print media. Uh, the number one thing, obviously, the easy one that I've seen. When I first came into the CIF Southern Section office, we didn't have a website. Uh, that was one of the first things that I implemented when I came from Long Beach State and where I was working prior and I got hired at, at the CIF is I, I developed a website and that was tough because building websites there was no you know these website companies that you give you a parameter of framing and stuff and you just pick and choose <laughs> in the fill and you actually had to write program and that type of thing to actually build a website and we went through many, many inclinations. And today, we still change our website every day. So I think the number one thing that I would see that's changed is the obviously the online media and the growth of that. Um, but at the same time, I think that that's helped the preps. Because I think that when you look at the print media and the major uh, television and radio networks, they spend so much time on the professional call at collegiate rakes that they overlook many times the the outstanding and amazing stories that are happening in the very, very backyards and and I think that entities like yourself are the ones who are really bringing the focus back to community and highlighting community highlighting the schools the players the people that are in your backyards instead of them being overlooked just because you know Kobe had a double double last night against the Clippers <laughs> um, you know I, I don't minimize the, the 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 job that Kobe does but it is a job for Kobe and at the end of the day this is a, a love for the, the student athletes and it's a love for yourselves Absolutely. I mean no one no one on this stage is getting rich and you have to have a love of, of the sports and you have to have a love of high school sports in particular if you want to make your life out of that. So I think the, the, the major change that I've seen in my time is, has been the growth of online media. Yeah, I think you're also right because now you're also getting that immediacy as well of information. I mean, you can find information about a score that same evening where, like you said, 15 years ago, you'd have to wait the next day. Or even if someone said, can I have some statistics about your team? There was no max preps to look on there. There weren't other websites as well. So yeah, I think you're, you're definitely right. That, that whole electronic media has just changed everything and probably has made your job probably more of a, you know, 24-hour deals were before, you know, you yeah, could punch you know, out Yeah, you know, used to talk about the 24-hour news cycle. There's a 24-second news cycle yeah. now. I mean, I, I've Don't got... sneeze. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if you do something out in a bar tonight and uh, it's something that you're not proud of, it will be on YouTube by the time you get home. And so, uh, you know, that part of the job has become more difficult. I have a, an iPhone, an iPad, uh, you know, personal computer, uh, every single, most every single media person in our coverage area has my home and cell phone number. Um, I'm always basically on call, um, I, and, and that's okay. I would, I've always said myself, a kind of a model for myself is, if you're not telling your story, somebody else is. And so I would rather people have access to me so that if they have something that they are discussing or something that they want to they want to find out about at least if they're going to write about it or talk about it they're going to get our side of the story so well well i just wanted to get you that one last question and it's not going to be tell me your most memorable moment with the 15 years because i'm sure there's plenty but can you tell us maybe one of your favorite moments um here with CIF and maybe what you've seen and it may not be like you said the big headline story it just might have been something you saw while you're out there but is there something that kind of sticks in your mind uh, throughout this time the that you've been here that yeah you put aside and said man uh, it was great I was there that moment well it's hardest to pick one I've, I mean I've been I've been part of so many great championships my very first championship was the the, the very first one I worked was the 97 uh, CIF football championships, and that was uh, Modern Day versus uh, Long Beach Poly. And uh, Long Beach Poly wasn't expected. Modern Day was just coming off of a national championship. And so they weren't really expected to, to beat Modern Day. 
And I, I remember that there was a, a gentleman by the name of Herman Ho, Ho, Ho Ching Ho Min, or I can't remember if he was from Pauly. And he had the most, one of the most amazing games I'd ever seen. As a matter of fact, the, the game was close and Paul Modern Day was kicking it. And this is the, what was memorable, the memorable part for me was they were kicking an onside kick and he actually picked the onside kick up and ran all the way in oh, for wow. a touchdown for, for <laughs> wow. basically selling the deal for Pauly. You know, that was in a memorable night. They were Grudegood winning the MVP on both sides of the ball in the 1999 uh, championship. Uh, you know, seeing Matt Leinert play sure. in, for modern day. I've seen so many great basketball games, so many great football games, so many great baseball games. There's just too many. I think for me, the accumulation, the thing that I will always treasure about my time in the CIF is the people that I work with. Yeah. The people that I work with are the best people, not only workers-wise, but they're just the best people I've ever been well, around. Well, that's where I wanted to end because we've been communicating and being handled very well, but I, I think she falls in the title of your assistant, Anita. Um, Fatma. Wonderful gal, very helpful, and you need to be aware of just how much she handles and is helpful when you're not there. We, we, we really appreciate it. There would no, be no me without her. As a matter of fact, we were hired on the same day. Huh. Our, very first, our first day was together, on the, and it was, just happens to be football pairings day. That was our uh, very first day. So we covered a few. Well, we want to thank, thank you, you very much for giving us your time. Thank you. I appreciate it. And we're looking it. forward to so covering much. a few more subjects with you. You see what we're about. Help us nurture this. We'll get the word out for you. It's a great relationship we have with CIF. And uh, together, it's just going to get stronger. I appreciate it, and I believe that you guys are doing a great job. Thank you. All right. Thanks, thanks. Tom. I'll let you head yeah, back on Back to work. <laughs> back, back to work. I saw someone else walk in the studio, stuck their head in. If we can transition here shortly to <laughs> yeah, and you know we're fantastic. we're gonna we're, yeah we'll be out at the uh, modern day Long Beach Poly getting highlights, so we're highlights. posting that. But yeah, it's great to to have an opportunity to speak to Tom Simmons of uh, CIF. We said several times the man. That's the, the guy to get a yeah, hold of. He's the man. So you know when you tell him we're gonna draw him in here and talk about division breakups. But speaking of that, we have someone else that it's just. Uh, to me is the epitome of basketball in the Inland Empire. We've talked to him before. I see him behind the curtain. If I think this would be a great time to bring up, if that's good with you. Sure, I'll let you. Hey, you want to be the? Uh, if you got a second, Gordon <laughs> Hamlo is how they say in the too, house. Too bad the camera can't pin up and get him through the curtains like the uh, Tonight Show and have him come out. Yeah. And um, I'm looking down at our monitor there. there yeah, I'm going to check that out while okay, Gordon sits in, so we can sit in with introduce Gordon. Gordon there. And uh, this is Gordon Hamlo, uh, son of the uh, infamous basketball dynasties. Of the uh, what era was that that he would have been at APU and and on? 54 to 87. Wow, it's a long time, long time. You know what? How, and you think about it, the uh, the times you spent having to you know watch your father give his time to all these other athletes and all that program. Now you find yourself in the same shoes, uh, being a family man and giving up your time all this weekend. Season's over, but you're here putting your dues in. I think that pays off where. And, and, and one of the reasons why you have, in my opinion, the most successful mid-season shootout, our basketball event, short of the CIF finals, in your AP uh, shootout. So and it, we had an outstanding time. Matter of fact, we got to cover a lot of these teams you're seeing in the CIF finals at your venue uh, in, at, in Azusa, Azusa Pacific, where we saw <clears throat> Etiwanda play. We saw... Uh, Modern day, not no, sorry, we saw Damien play out there. We yeah. saw that uh, real famous Roland team play. Those, uh, <laughs> you talk about scholar athletes, you, you got a few on that team, don't There's you? A couple. There's a couple, that's for sure. uh, Gordon Hamlow is the head coach for Roland High School in uh, uh, the Inland Empire out of the uh, wild, we, we called it the Wild West earlier, yeah. the uh, Hacienda, the wild League. Hacienda yeah. League. And we got to see you at a game that we were, another entertaining game that wasn't supposed to. They turn out that way was that Walnut game towards the end of your season. Yeah, it was a good it, game. That was a good game, too. So Anthony's back with us. It yeah. seems like they've <laughs> taken care of the glitch. Well, when we walked in, it was a, you know, there's Hamlo. And we're like, guys all over the place. <laughs> Tell us what, what's going on for you today and uh, what your role is. I'm just basically volunteering. Uh, how They need help running an event, and, and uh, I've been asked to help out so I've been here pretty much since Tuesday every day all the way till 
10.30 each night. She uh, was. <laughs> Anthony, one of the reasons I, I really wanted to take advantage of having Gordon here. Take advantage of Gordon? Okay. I, I did. That's exactly what I wanted to do because I really respect, I really respect your basketball knowledge. And you have great insight and uh, knowledge with these, the teams that are here. And let's talk about the game that we're excited about coming up, this modern-day poly game. Uh, you, you told me from the beginning months ago uh, this is where it was going to end up. You yeah. said these were the teams that no one's going to get past this division play without going through. It's like, say, you can't get to heaven without going through Dallas first, the DFW <laughs> airport. You weren't going to the CIF finals unless you went through one of these two teams. So uh, in that, how do you see the makeup? Where do you see strengths, weaknesses? If you were prepping for this game, how would you approach it from either side? Well, they're both tremendous teams. They're both loaded t with talent. Uh, Polly, big, strong, athletic. You're fine. You're fine. I just get a little more pressure um, for you there. <laughs> uh, big, strong, athletic. Modern day uh, came through in the clutch on uh, Tuesday night. Uh, I think I want to say they were down the entire game. Just oh yeah, they did come back in, and, 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 and showed some great character coming yeah, back. Showed in some that. grit. They were able to pull that out. They've got a couple, couple great players. Uh, Kalen Reinhardt didn't have a tremendous game on Tuesday, but uh, he'll he'll be a factor tonight. He's a He's a talented player, and they've got a couple of uh, couple of strong bigs. It'll be interesting to see their bigs go up against the poly bigs, and uh, uh, it should be a great, great game. It's two very talented teams. So let me ask you, and my limited basketball knowledge, <laughs> which is, as you know, very limited, <laughs> I, uh, with the help of my team that was there that night, we saw that first game at Awanda and poly being a much slower pace than that Loyola modern day game. So is there a speed difference, or do you think Long Beach, or that, that Polly brought it down because of the game they were playing against Etiwana, which I always thought was a fast team, and you've had experience with them. And so do you see them both being fast, slow? Is that a different pace in the it, tempo it, of the game? It felt to me like in that modern-day Loyola game, Loyola sped that game up. Loyola guards got out there, got after it, pushed the pace, and that was how they were able to be successful. They were able to score in space. Uh, in, in the Etiwanda Loyola game, it was a grinder, and that's, you know, Etiwanda can get out and run, but Polly's not going to let you do that, and Etiwanda's not going to let Polly run. So it was a, it was more of a half-court, beat you up type game. They weren't, they weren't letting any, either have an inch, because they're both very good defensive teams, and, and that's why that game, I think, slowed down. It wasn't because there wasn't any speed out there. It was neither one was going to give them an inch, and and, you know, they were able to nullify each other for the better part of four quarters. Yeah, I mean, you had an opportunity to watch them on Tuesday, so both teams. What are going to be some of the keys, you think, for each of them coming into this ball game, going head to head? I mean, I'm sure with such great talent from each side, mistakes are going to have to be very limited because the other one will capitalize. But what other things have you, did you see that, you know, if you were going to go into it as a coach, what, what you would focus on? Well, if <laughs> I had their talent. <laughs> Kids are walking around out there. Um, you know, in this, in this game, they're they're both very evenly matched, and that they're they're both got great size. They both got great guard play. Um, uh, team that doesn't turn it over is obviously going to be in a, in the driver's seat. Uh, rebounds are going to be very important. If you're giving up offensive boards, you're going to be in trouble because points are going to be at a premium. Uh, you you're going to need to take advantage of every opportunity and you can't give any opportunities away uh, so you know transition we'll, we'll see what that we'll see who's going to give an inch in transition well, offense that, and defense that's going to be big and i don't know how much because i know your duties that night you were escorting teams you were you know chauffeur, not chauffeuring but you know you were <laughs> escorting you were, them yeah, yeah. Were giving the royal treatment tour guide <laughs> and uh i actually in, wound <laughs> up in disneyland that day i took a wrong turn uh -oh. like, <laughs> i was watching and one of the things the team that i was uh, out with that night uh said that and we were so surprised because it was not as familiar as i was with it it was not at a wanda ball they that ball was turned over ball handling wise both teams quite often but nobody was capitalizing. You know, it's usually the team that turns it over. The problem was nobody was capitalizing on it. We noticed that when the ball was turned over in transition, specifically Etiwanda would run down, press the shot, instead of regrouping and pulling it back, you know, setting the run floor. Run their stuff. Yeah, and run, and run your offense. Because mm -hmm. we noticed specifically, you brought it up in watching the tape, that they weren't setting up their ball handling, of which, which they are notarized. You know, they're, they're, we do know they're a defensive team. 
Also, you mentioned yeah, that. Known for I, a patient ball I, control but team, I, too. Yeah. But I, I noticed him giving up the boards. I noticed that the boards were being abandoned and think like, why isn't anybody taking advantage of this? But that was my perception. I don't know how much you got to see. Well, I got to see a, a good chunk of it. I, w I won't tell you I got to sit down and watch the game like you. Don't say that, too. I'd huh? love to. <laughs> <laughs> All right, get in trouble. You're right. There you go. <laughs> Fired on the spot. Um, uh, Paulie had a distinct size advantage inside. And I, I thought yeah. the kids from Etiwanda battled and did a great job. But Polly had a distinct size advantage inside, and they were able to take advantage of it. Uh, turnovers by either team, like I said, you have some speed out there to where uh, these guys, they're, they're, they're conditioned. They, they don't turn around and pout when they make a mistake. They don't put their head down when they make a mistake. They bust their tail back. They're not going to give an inch. And I think that's why nobody was able to necessarily capitalize on it. Um, but, you know. It, it could also be the stage. That's that's one of the sure. things that gets gonna, kids. That's somewhat of what I saw, and and that brings me into something else. If I'm a coach, if I got a chance, if you can buy a ticket, buy a ticket for the CIF finals two years from now. The sophomore class mm -hmm. that's on the floor. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. How many sophomores yeah. that are like number one? You know, yep. you got uh, Jordan McLaughlin for yep. Wanda, the kid from uh, Loyola, the sophomore that was on the floor yep. there. Everyone right down the line. You got a sophomore class coming up. It's probably about that year of growth, huh? Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. You're the yeah, you're right. If I'm an MBA, I'm thinking, how are we going to do this? this you you can game. come sit with all the other Division One coaches who will be salivating at those games. Yeah, that's going to be some. That's going to be some play coming up. And oh, what's yeah. nice is we've got a couple more great years of basketball yeah. here for yeah. sure. That's already in place. Well, we're in a hotbed for talent. I tell you, it, it may have been down for a little while, but Los Angeles, the L.A. Orange County, it, it's it's loaded with players. Loaded. Uh, you know, I, I got a, a question. I want to corner him and uh -oh. ask him. Because I, but there's one other thing. I want to talk about division <laughs> with him, which we've all discussed. But one of the things, okay, because this is going to be so easy for you. you got you got to pick one of those two teams to be the coach of tonight. Which team do you want to take into this game? You could go either way with yeah, it. They're you both can. so tall. <laughs> you got to tell you what right now. I asked um, you to pick one. <laughs> and I, why? I, you know, you could go. There's That's not an easy pick. I, 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 I'm, I don't know if I had a chance to coach those poly kids. It'd be kind of fun. And the, same, and the same thing with the, the modern day kids. I mean, they're, they're talented as well. I just, you can't go wrong either way. They're you know, both top 25 national teams. Long teams. Beach has <laughs> just enough street to make them to, to you know it's not a given but well, i want to see this down inside who's going to muscle down inside? exactly who it's going to be <laughs> i'll tell you who that person is that person uh, uh, is jordan bell oh yeah jordan bell if he can just he's here's a monster what I he's a monster but he needs to oh boy how do you tell a beast a man up i did see him when he wasn't getting the calls to be looking i don't want to see you looking at the ref for the call or twitching your head around do it <laughs> be confident what you did and move on with it yeah and he's got that ability uh rashawn prince Great posture, confident. He's going to handle the ball. He's going to put it in there. Yep. Those two together, great combination. This little kid right here, Joshua Munson, I was talking about him before. I believe it's Munson. Just the kid with the long braids mm -hmm. and stuff. He's a he, all crazy over, he cannot ignore this kid. It, let's look at his size. He's a monster there, there. yeah. He, he is. Let's look at him right here. Munson's we got a him at, No, he's a seat, senior. Seat, no, he was. That's, then I'm nah. talking about the wrong guy. Then that, then I'm have, the, maybe it is freshman the, 10 is the one with the braids. Is that it? Then yeah, that's the one with a freshman in it. Yeah. Well. The that's time I'm that's talking impressive. About the wrong guy. It, that it, might it, be one of the reasons the I'd go with Polly so I could have four years. <laughs> there you go. Here's, here's the one thing I, I, I'm saying is that do not, I think that that kid cannot be left alone because he is a pest. He's moving that ball. And if you deny him or ignore him, he's going to burn you. I think yeah. that that's where he, what he brings to this game. There's big talent on that team, but they have weapons, and you can't isolate one of them. I'll tell you, though, and I, I can't remember. Xavier Johnson. And yes, big, um, got big-time scores, Xavier Johnson and, and right the, here. And the other big for modern day, I thought, in their game against Loyola, they came up big at the end of the game. Uh, I, th I thought they got after it, and they were the key in, in turning that game modern day's direction late. So that's why it'll be fun I, to watch those bigs I, go. I, yeah, I think they were prepared. Yeah. I think they were definitely prepared. Yeah. They've been there. They have tradition at that school. And, oh, yeah. Um, that, that's how I saw it. Uh, that They just had more. I keep throwing the word posture out. It's just kind of the way when they were on the floor, they had great confidence. And, and I think their tradition, McKnight, in the years he's been there, he, you know, you're expected and you've been through this. And so the youngers, the olders teach the youngers in their mentoring process. And that it works for modern day. Yeah. So. I just want to take it around full circle because, like we said, you know, you're here volunteering, uh, you coordinate a shootout, 
You're also the head coach for the Roman Raiders. Tell me uh, how you felt your season went, the kids that were with you. Uh, I know some will be graduating, but you'll have some that are returning. Uh, and, you know, what you're thinking for, for next year, because I know, you know, that's got to be ready for you for the next season, right? I mean, We've already started thinking yeah. about next season. You know, we, we graduate some great seniors. Uh, Derek Marr is uh, number 24 for us. He, he, he's the one you interview, right. interviewed. Yeah. He yeah. actually earned first team all league also for the oh, wow. league, which was really neat. Um, and then, you know, my son's on the team and he's graduating as well. So it, it's, you know, you it's don't bittersweet. I'm kind of you know, sad. But. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of nice because I don't see you. You're always kind of looking for that coach son relationship. And he's a player on your team more so than any coach that I've seen. He is a player on your team. I don't see you favoring. I would have not got the connection. It, you know, obviously the name, you know, but yeah, difference. But there, but you treat that team very it's from from looking at from the outside in uh you, you execute that very well well thank you that's it's not easy oh, i'm sure it's balancing I mean, that, yeah. there's a natural pull to want to to want to have them in there but y at the same time you've you yell yourself you, in the mirror hey coach what are you doing to my son <laughs> well i've been fortunate my wife doesn't <laughs> yell at me <laughs> but uh, i've been fortunate in that respect to have we we have a great relationship driving to school spending you know an hour a day on the road together when he's not sleeping um <laughs> but uh you know, we get a chance to talk and talk about the team, and he'll actually be next year coaching probably on the freshman level for us. Oh, awesome! So great. You know, he, he, I spent a lot of time with my assistants on that one, and because I, I want to be uh, impartial, I don't want to be the one that necessarily pulls that trigger all the time. Because you know, th there is a balance when your son's on the team, because there is a perception that he's going to get the benefit of the doubt. But I thought he, he. He, I thought he had a nice solid you know, senior I, year. I would tell you more so than that. I, 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 I really have a bad taste in my mouth. I really did. I just drank some water. But uh, and when they, you end up picking on them a little bit more. That's when I had a problem yeah. with my kids, and I demanded more from them, and I ended up harping on them more. And I wasn't very good at that. So I admired it in you that, it, you know, that's what I'm saying, both ends of that. It's not just putting them in whatever. I wanted to get it out there. I wanted you to know that people notice. It is, it's hard because you expect more out of your kid. Uh, but, you know, I, I tried to because, you know, I've watched that too from parents for years, especially in youth league. And when I coached him, actually, when he was in, uh, in basketball from third grade on, whatever it was, I've really tried to bite my, my tongue whenever. Okay, hey, Count to ten and then yeah. talk to him. <laughs> tough one. Hey, by the way, this is a good time for you to uh, market yourself for the golf coach again, or bad time, or <laughs> <no>. <laughs> we talked about that. You said that was one of the nicer first. First, the first, first match is on Monday. Oh, I, <laughs> oh, all right, uh, uh, here's uh, supposed uh, to be sunny weather. Yeah, I hope so. Great part of it's been a long week. And uh, again, we, you know, I almost uh, wanted to say something to uh, Mr. Simmons. I don't know if we call him Tom's or Mr. Simmons, but. Uh, as well, we have discussed this divisional uh, development, the evolution of the divisional play, and how they've decided. I want to have a show after everything's done over. Bring you in, talk, bring people in. We're trying to figure out how we can set a Skype up and do this and uh, discuss. Uh, you know, they, we said you know they they figured it out and humbled us. They got it right in football. I think there's some tweaking still to be done. I don't want to take away from the product because. Obviously, we're an exciting week here, and it's yeah. proven they've got the right teams in here. Uh, it's just that we know that there's a lot of teams that uh, we might be able to see. But I don't know. I, you know, I don't have an answer for it, and, and I by no means. But I think it's good fodder, and it's good to discuss. It, it is a tough proposition because you're never going to please everybody. You're right. Right. And, you know, I guess the question you'd have to ask most teams when, that are upset, where, would, where do you want to be? Yeah. And inevitably, it's, well, I want to be where I can win. Well, everybody wants to be in that position. True. So how do you make it fair and balanced and as fair as possible? And it's, you know, there's still probably some tweaking to go to it, but there's there's no easy answer to that one. <laughs> hey, well, you just made me think of something. Without bringing up anything specific, I think you've been here all weekend. And I don't know. We were talking about people that, you know, get where they want to be and have the, the path they have to get to the championship. What happened with the... Uh, Laverne Luther, did they end up coming the other night? Did they? I know. <laughs> no, they were eliminated. They lost, did they? I think it was 69 59. Mm -hmm. Uh, a close one. Big kid, Grant Jarrett, got in, got in foul trouble. Oh. I didn't get to watch all that. Yeah, I, did, I, just I, read. I walked in, it was a tight ball, or walked out, it was a tight ball game. I walked back in, and I think he had had his fourth foul, and, and it had, the lead had stretched. And, and I, I believe he wound up fouling out also. Oh, wow. Was, I mean, that was a big loss for them. 
Yeah, I just, you know, I, we only saw them to get to play once. I know that, that they're and touted to be the best team in, well, in uh, the whatever it is they're touted to be S the best Sarah team. Sarah is no slouch. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, division, ball club. that division was really highly was looked at very, as well very, for, yeah, for AA, talented. right? Yes, yeah. yes. Well, I see that we're coming close to the end of our live podcast for the hour. We know that your time demands back on the floor. We're getting close. We're 30 minutes before game time. I am we off now, actually. <laughs> I've been working every night this week, and I am ah, off for the evening. And he took time to sit down oh, and talk to us. Hey, what a nice my guy. My wife is on her way. We're going to go over to downtown Disney after the Mission Viejo game. There you go. <laughs> Mission Viejo game. Okay. No. Yeah, yeah. So, well, we have plans for tonight, too. Uh, oh, jeez. So, <laughs> our boss has said that he's treating us to a nice dinner tonight after everything's over, too, to end Sweet. our season. So, yeah, little do they know the boss is going to walk out before the check comes. Yeah, we're heading around the corner to the fancy steak places. So, oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that really nice? Good. Yeah, downtown Disney has one. Uh, we're going to go to, uh, what's that snack bar called? A Mickey steak <laughs> a, Mickey, a, a Mickey burger. A Mickey burger. Nice. Uh, anyways, nice. we want to thank you for well, giving it. us yeah, your Yeah, thanks, Gordon. Appreciate it. Say hi to your thank dad. You so much. Say hi to your wife for us. And we're looking forward to, you remember the two most important things we're looking forward to next year? <laughs> the shootout. Cushion chair. Cushion chair up in the second row for the shootout. Two chairs for the shootout. Oh, that's so, funny. Well, thanks, thanks again, guys. Uh, you thanks, take Gordon. Care. You take care. So that was head coach Gordon Hamler of the Rowan Raiders taking some time out in his volunteer role here uh, with CIF. And we had a great uh, podcast here, had a chance to talk to Director of Communication Tom Simmons and, of course, Coach Gordon Hamler. And we've just learned, again, so much information. And we hope everyone watching as well got the insight of what it takes as far as CIF is concerned and just the whole high school sports in general. You know what's amazing to me? We actually slipped in some talk about the game. Yeah. <laughs> and amongst them all that. And we, yeah, we, we have to thank CIF for letting us use their area. This is their yeah, post yeah, yeah. I don't know if Ken can zoom out a little bit, but this is the post-game uh, table. This is where all the players come out and, and talk to the media. Post-game so. interviews, and they have this set up so choreographed. One team comes in, they put yeah. their name tags and everything. And, and of, of course, Tom is, time to of course, uh, Tom, you know, we can thank him. Say, you know, he said, why don't you use the room? It looks nice. Yeah, it's, yeah we went you know, to the court side and deal with all the noise. And he yeah, said, I hear, hey, you can hear the music in the background, too. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I think also, let's take time for out there to thank all the people oh, yeah. for this season that have helped us uh, specifically this week to pull off some of our CIF final coverage we had Kurt Mayo I was say Benilla, Brian Gillette up. first <laughs> <laughs> hey I'm just thankful to, to be here to yeah the truth. I like uh, like uh, Tom said uh, just find it a privilege to do what I like and to do it and have the ability to you know do this and, and it couldn't happen without like you mentioned uh, Kurt and Robert and now Ken here today because come back you and I are very limited in what we can do. I mean, we can't sit here and talk without, from, uh, you Arib, know, uh, Owen Arib. That has done some wonderful pre-game montages. We'll just get some more of that in there. And yeah, and if you're interested in, as we say, if you're interested in sports journalism, uh, sports coverage, we do have volunteer or internship programs. So um, definitely hit us up on the website. Follow us on Twitter, Sports Scene TV. Also, we're on iTunes, our audio podcast uh, at iTunes, uh, also under Sports Scene TV. But yeah, most definitely the, the steak dinner is going to be worth it. It's, yeah. it's kind of our wrap-up. We're not talking of, no slouch <laughs> steak. We ain't <laughs> talking no black ink. It's, uh, kind of a, a uh, no, uh, Applebee's, uh, you know. <laughs> kind of a wrap-up of, of our basketball coverage as we go into spring sports coming yes, up. Yes, and let's talk about some of the potentials coming up here for spring sports. Yeah, definitely baseball. Uh, and we can get some even some softball in there because I know, uh, you know, for us spring sports, we might love baseball, but you can always get some entertaining games and softball as well, and then um, any other things that come up. Maybe you, you, maybe you might be on the track and field course. I don't yeah, know. That's it. That's <laughs> I'm going to be handling the high jump there. So, okay. Well, that's it. That's going to wrap us up. We're getting to the top of the hour. We want to make yeah. sure we get our seats set up for court. Side. Exactly. We're going to be tweeting you live from courtside, so stay with the tweet. Send your photos, and so make sure you stick with us here on SportsCTV.net, your local high school sports website. For Brian Gillette, I'm Anthony Serenano. We're not in Studio G. That's right. We're in Studio <laughs> ACC. Yeah, there you Anaheim go. Anaheim Convention Center. <laughs> so for, until next time for our weekly podcast, we'll see you around. And don't forget to visit us on our website at sportsctv.net. So long, everybody. <laughs>